Hello everyone, welcome back to UC Star Astrologies. I'm your host, Cindy. This is the Astrology for Gemini, May 2016. And for all you Jimmies out there, Jiminies, <laughs> who are following me, I will share a secret, and that is, I'm a Gemini too. <laughs> a Sun Gemini. So you know I have if if you are following my videos then you are slowly learning my constellations <laughs> in my astrology chart okay so we have mercury going retrograde and mercury is the lord of the constellation gemini so be wary and i would recommend you doing those mercury mantras and it is even at it it strongest and I noticed when I did my Gemini um, mantra during the um, the Mercury retrograde in last summer it just was it was enormously strong you will really reap the benefits when you do the Mercury mantra while it is going in retrograde okay and it is happening in your 12th house in Taurus and that is where you are making and earning money in foreign lands so if you're not living in a foreign country like i am then you are possibly uh, working for a company that is that is an international company and mercury going backwards here is it it, it could make um some miscommunications happen here in being able to earn money with people from a foreign country and things could also be happening behind the scenes um, it is it is um, you could be feeling like you're you're planting seeds trying to create something and it you don't know what's happening you feel a little bit out in the dark of of the know of what's going on and then when mercury goes forward then then you you're going to feel surprised oh <laughs> this is what has come about okay so yes it is a great time for old projects to come and to for you to work on these old projects that you started in the past where um, you, if you went and said to someone, I would like to start um, uh, working for you, doing this and this and this and that, and they say, yes, yes, okay, when can you start? And, and then, and then it, it, it didn't start and it, because they were out of the country or whatever, and now the time to go back and say hello did you forget me I am may I start yes it is a great time to to go back to the project okay um, to make to earn money uh, and to make that project happen so any project that you started and didn't finish doing okay um, that is the same with Mars and Saturn in retrograde in your seventh house that has to do with relationships it is possible that someone from your past will come and that is also another thing that I noticed about Mercury in retrograde for Gemini as Gemini every time Mercury goes into retrograde I always got a call from a past boyfriend <laughs> and um, yeah so you could just be surprised here. Whoever shows up, you never know which past boyfriend is calling you up. And um, and if you were involved in a uh, relationship with Mars and Saturn here, it 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 could have shown that it was not not really going fast it was really slow it's not knowing is this relationship really happening is it what's happening you're in the relationship but um is it you you may be feeling that that feeling like 
are we really a couple? What are we? What is going on here? And, um, and, uh, yes, but now Mars, Saturn is going retrograde and easing up the tension and Mars is going retrograde. So it is a time where that person could be starting to say, yeah, relaxing and now that they got to know you uh, uh, for a while and and it is possible that they are um, rethinking and trying to backtrack and then um, wanting to wanting to make it happen. Pluto is also going retrograde in your eighth house that has to do with sex. It has to do with uh, joint finances. And it has to do with, um, um, did I say marriage, marriage partner, taxes, yes, income taxes, uh, other people's money. It has to do, uh, um, yeah, I think I basically mentioned everything. It is very spiritual. It has to also do with things like astrology and deep spiritual things, researching, going real, real deep. And Pluto here, going backwards, is wanting to, it's, it's deeper, it's even stronger than ever before, wanting to clean up this house. Um, and Pluto belongs to the eighth house. It knows what it's doing. And it is preparing you. If you had any kind of, if, if you were abusing this house, because Pluto was in here going forward, making it possible for you to gain money through resources. And if you were abusing this house in any of the, um, from the list that I shared what it means, this what this eighth house means, then it's going to come to light. And why? Because Pluto wants to prepare you because you can possibly get married very soon. Mars and Saturn sitting in your seventh house. It's very possible that you get married soon. And Pluto is wanting to, wanting this relationship, even Saturn. Saturn is very spiritual. Saturn is saying, we want I want you to find someone that is uh, mature, uh, stable, long-lasting, and um, so you're being very picky, very careful about how you, who you're choosing to be your partner. You're going very slow into the relationship, and then Pluto working here in your eighth house, repairing it, cleaning it up, any kind of secrets or things of blockages that are in this eighth house are coming to light so that you can deal with it. It's making you think and to have a uh, be very conscientious about what you've been doing, how you've been abusing this because Pluto in Capricorn here is abuse of power and it's possible that you've been abusing the, the, the power of Pluto in the eighth house. So, um, yes, if, if, if you did this, then it'll all come to light and it makes you think about, okay, if you, if, uh, uh, any kind of secrets, like if you were abusing sex or so, or, um, um, having a second person on the side and making your, your girlfriend that you have jealous and, it, and and so that you can get it from her, you know? And every time she thinks that she needs to keep you and so she gives you sex or whatever, whatever. If you were abusing sex in any kind of way, um, it's gonna come up to light and and you have to clean that up. You have to deal with it. You It's just, comes to your attention, okay, that you were using a people to get your sex or whatever. And uh, Jupiter was going retrograde and will be going forward on May 9th. So Jupiter going backwards was helping you to also 
it ha also realize, go back and think, okay, um, anything that was not right in the family or in the home, it's time to patch things up. And now that Jupiter is about to go forward again, this is the time in the beginning of May where this is coming to fruition. Any, any riffles that was happening in the family is now in the beginning of May coming into fruition before May 9th. Um, so if, if you had any kind of difficulties here, then it's you trying to make things right within the family. If you had trouble with your siblings or anyone in your, in your immediate family or whatever, you're trying to make things right here and then Jupiter goes forward and then you're able to reap that blessing because you made things right and then you're you're being blessed in within the family so Jupiter just might make something happen for you where you um, you just may be surprised how Jupiter will work for you if you make it happen if you clean up the fourth house that has to do with family and home so then we have Sun also in Taurus, and Sun is not very strong um, here in Taurus. You may feel um, um, in your 12th house, especially with Mercury going backwards. You may feel um, not at your at your strongest in in making money. Um, though, yeah. Sun is, is trying to work for you though, so that you are able to create. Uh, you might have to, it might help to uh, allow an authoritative figure, um, a business partner or so to, to, um, to help you organize what needs to be organized um, uh, to create money. Okay? Um, possible that money might have to go out to to um, uh, government officials or things of that sort. So try to do your Mercury mantras. <laughs> That'll help. Um, you might have this feeling also that you just need to go into seclusion and to and to try to. Um, regenerate <laughs> while well, Sun is sitting here here and maybe through being alone you get um, ideas on how to make money in foreign lands and so um then we have the new moon on May the 6th in your 12th house and that's where the party is New Moon, Venus, Mercury, and Sun all sitting in your 12th house. It's very strong. So it, it does show a new beginnings, a new possibility of making money um, in foreign lands or um, also falling in love perhaps with someone who is from a foreign country uh, or or maybe um, I wouldn't book any I wouldn't book any vacations while Mercury is going into retrograde okay um, it is not really a good time to to be traveling while Mercury is in retrograde but if it if you have if it must be if you have no way out and you have to go traveling due to some kind of a business meeting or whatever do your Mercury mantras because you may never know. There might be, they may be um, having a strike at the airport or something strange of that sort could happen and you could miss your airplane. And yeah. And then on the 7th, hmm, your sun is trining Pluto. This is very interesting. So, you may, this is, uh, you may be feeling, um, yeah, you could be making 
money. Pluto has to do with other people's money, and the sun in Taurus also has to do with making money. So, um, yes, it's 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 a it's a day where money could be flowing on May seventh, and or that you could be feeling cherished by your um, marital partner, um, or that or that they are earning or money is flowing to you through them. Then we have on May the tenth, Venus is trining Jupiter. So this is on May the 10th, a wonderful energy for um, love and feeling cherished from your family. Um, also possible where money could be flowing from your family, even if from family from out of the country as well that could be happening. Um, like I say, when Jupiter goes forward on the 9th, it's possible that if you have family from out of the country, maybe they're wanting to give you a gift or something. They're wanting to. And that would be this blessing that comes from Jupiter if you, if you really uh, uh, made things right within the family while Jupiter was in retrograde. And this is the day on May the 10th where the blessing that could come now from Jupiter when it trines Venus. On the 11th of May, um, Venus in Taurus and Saturn, they are uh, harmoniously speaking with each other. So this is a Again, another day where it's just wonderful energy for love with your partner, with business partners, um, romantically. Um, it is great energy. Okay. Um, then on the 13th of May, we have a quarter moon in Leo, which is happening in your third house. And the third house belongs to Gemini. So... Um, you may be wanting to, this is a great time for action, um, wanting to express yourself, to grow, um, wanting to make your goals happen, okay? So, uh, if you, this is the, the best time to make those phone calls, be a shaker maker of your matrix. And then we have... A full moon in um, your seventh house. And on the same day, the sun goes into Gemini. So, wow, we have the sun in your first house, a full moon in your seventh house. So, this is very strong energy for Geminis. You're feeling really strong now because when that sun was in your twelfth house, you were feeling a little weak. But now it is in your house, Gemini, and you are shining your light and you're feeling strong. Um, it is a good energy and, and then this full moon. But Mars is also sitting here as well and Saturn. I would do my full moon mantras, Mars mantras, and Saturn mantras. So whatever happens, it's very spiritual, very deep. And um, because I have definitely noticed that when I do my Mars mantras, if I am angry in any way, and I do my Mars mantras, and um, I feel very lighthearted. And very happy, and 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 there is also a teas that I drink, uh, like my one of my favorite, which I always talk about, is the um, stingy needle. That is also belongs to Mars, and when I drink this or I do my Mars mantras, and I'm on my way to work, I go to work feeling so good, so happy. I'm I is. And as I say, if a planet is going in retrograde, that is the best time, the best time to do your mantras, that 
that particular planet mantra because when the when the a planet goes forward you're really going to reap it's just going to boom you're going to reap the benefits of it very strongly um then so yes I would suggest that because the full moon would means either endings of a relationship here or a check and balance, okay? It could be an ending or your uh with with the uh, Mars here as well. Um the either you or the partner may feel a, like you were being a little insensitive. So, um but if you do the mantras, then it's it could be very spiritual, very deep, okay? Um, it, it could be a very loving. You can upgrade that energy with the mantras. Um, then on the 23rd of May, Mercury goes forward. And hallelujah. <laughs> so now is the time to reap those benefits if you were doing your mantras and the money starts to flow and your communication with foreigners gets better again on the 24th of may venus is zero degrees in gemini great great wonderful time to get your hair cut to uh, get a, a, a makeover and, and usually people automatically want to do this as soon as Venus goes into your ascendant, your moon sign, or your sun sign, you're just wanting to invest in yourself and, and spend money to invest in your appearance because the first house has to do with your appearance. And you're, you're shining that light to the seventh house and attracting. If, you're, if you are single, this is the great time to attract a... Uh, um, someone into your life when Venus is sitting here on the 24th and then on the 29th Mars enters Scorpio in your sixth house and it's going backwards so it's going to it's working very deep anything when Mars was going forward and if it was causing uh, friction within the workplace while it was uh, going forward a few months ago or yeah a while back then Mars going backwards here is going to want to repatch things and make things right um, with any um, um, with anyone at the workplace um, you're wanting also on the 29th of May it's the last quarter moon in Pisces within your 10th house so this is the double meaning because the 10th house has to do with your career and uh, your reputation out in the workplace and in the world and you're wanting to revise integrate and to cleanse and um, realign yourself you're wanting to follow up and complete activities that you started at the new moon phase. So it's a great time to manifest your goals and to be successful and be responsible. So that was the astrology for Gemini May 2016. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe if you want a reading done with me then just write me a letter. Um, just write me through YouTube and we'll see each other soon. Bye.